So my name is Shu Lan Tian, and I'm a assistant professor in Mayo Clinic. So today I will give a presentation of a unified somatic calling of next generation sequencing data enhance the detection of clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential, which is hard to say. So in short, it's just a chip. Oh, one sec. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay, so what is a chip? So chip can be defined by a somatic mutation occurs in a leukemia drive gene with a variant area frequency uh, greater than 2% uh, in blood or bone mirror. Uh, yet there's no diagnostic evidence for a, a hematological new plasma. So basically you can, you can interpret the chip as uh, the consequence of this somatic mutation, I know it either no clinical consequences at all, or further expand into the malignant state. So where we are interested in the CHIP, so based on the epidemiology study, CHIP confers an increased risk of hematological malignancy, uh, cardiovascular disease, and a reduced lifespan. So usually it happens after the middle age. So the most commonly mutated chip driver gene are they are epigenomic regulator, DNA damage repair gene, and the regulatory tyrosine kinase. See these genes probably you can see them often in the blood cancer related, you know, uh, studies. So what is the chip prevalence in the population? So to answer this question, so first I will show you this figure from the science publication. So it really depends on the sequencing platform or technology. So if you use the target panel, which you really, you know, in the implement in the clinic, so basically that you use a high depth and you can detect the variant area frequency up to lower to 0.5%. So in that case, you can claim that in the older population, which is the 70 uh, uh, year old above, uh, probably 30% are cheap carriers. But if you use the whole exome sequencing data or whole genome sequence data from a large scale, and they can detect the VNF roughly three to 7%. So in that case, there might be 10 to 20% of the cheap carrier in the older population. And uh, further, if you use the error correct sequence, uh, you can detect up to 0.01%. Uh, so in that case, you can claim basically, you know, it's just the universal, uh, the cheap carrier probably universal in the uh, populations that are above the middle age. So basically that we are interested in the cheap research because uh, they represent a precursor state for the hematological malignancy and uh, through study and through we can actually modify surveillance or rather apply the additional repeatings. So what are the biomimetic challenges on detect the chip? So detect the chip actually is very, very challenging. So the variant area fraction of a somatic uh, mutation in the blood, they are highly variable. So as low as uh, uh, you know, less than 1%. So, you know, the germline, they are much higher than this and they are predictable, but this one is unpredictable. So most uh, available colors actually, they are not focused on the low VNF event. So typically 5% uh, uh, less. And, uh, but a large cohort study, usually they, they adopt the whole exome or whole genome sequencing because of the cost. So in that case, that the sequencing depth is actually is very less optimal. And uh, from the studies, we know that uh, most subjects actually they only carry one chip. So in that case, you can imagine that you detect uh, you know, a lot, lots of uh, candidate uh, variant, uh, and you claim that the asthmatic mutation actually is the majority or the massive them actually the artifact. So this is cause a lot of problem to nail down what is the true chip. And uh, to define the somatic origin, there's no suitable control for this kind of study. So, and plus that the, the variant uh, VNF of the chip, they might be overlap with the VNF of the germline variant. 
So based on this scenario, we have been working on to, uh, to develop a chip detection workflow. So the first critical module for this workflow is the uh, main, we try to develop a meta color. This color aim to improve the detection rate. So here we call the recall. So for this purpose, we simulated a, a large set of chip genome with a genome in a bottle reference genome and the previous published chip location. And with this data, partial of this data set, we first benchmark 10 open source uh, colors and try to see their you know, sensitivity. And meanwhile, we also develop a VAR uh, tracker, which is highly permissive uh, for the variant uh, uh, tracking. So when I talk about the variant tracking, basically just the, as long as I find the one read, one alternative read support that variation, I will keep it for the further, you know, further refinement. So now we probably get a lot, lots of uh, variant, raw variant as a candidate of a chip. And the next step is how can we find the good from this, uh, you know, the big, the, the pile of sand. So in this case, we have been working on to develop a classifier, try to aim, try to uh, improve the precision. So basically, this is a motor class classification problem. So you have a bunch of raw variant, and you try to group them into a chip or germline variant or artifact. And for this, we extracted a bunch of features for this variant, and we benchmarked four supervised machine learning algorithm for their performance. Once we finish the production, we also do some uh, post production refinement. So I think that, uh, first of all, we apply some ad hoc rules to flag the potential miss uh, production. So you can imagine the whole exam sequencing, whole genome sequencing, they are very sequence uh, depth is low. So in this case, if one variant they detected by two color out of three. And uh, this, uh, uh, this position has been pre previously uh, reported as a cheap location. So in that case, uh, we will flag them out uh, for the manual inspection. And uh, also to you know, facilitate the large scale manual curation, we also provided a, a, a model try to assign the confidence score. This model is a high oracle basic model, and uh, they try to model a reference population with age uh, less younger than 40. So the assumption is that uh, if it's a population younger than 40, so basically that uh, we are uh, assume that uh, we are anticipated that uh, no or very little chip carrier. So this is the result for benchmarking the variant color. So this figure just basically show that, uh, okay, we benchmark a 10 variant color. <clears throat> and the way the, the right, uh, the right side is the number of Intel and the uh, left side is the SMV. And um, from this figure, we can see that uh, the VAR tracker, which is red line, they are highly sensitive. Uh, and the detection limit up to 0.5%. So you can see that the x-axis is the VNF level. So because of the different VNF, so the simulation efficiency could be different. So in this case, we plot the absolute number of mutation detected instead of the, instead of, give me a second, I'm just trying to open it. So instead of using the absolute, use the relative value. So the second step we want to see what is the overall detection performance for these colors. So from the left side is the recall. So you can imagine that this step we focus on recall. So we don't, we actually don't care about the precision. So the right side is the precision. And uh, so I think that the next module will fix this step. So from the left figure, you can see that the recall is basically that VAR tracker perform better than VARDIC and MUTEC2. And so this will be our component for the mental color. 
So we have the left side is a whole uh, genome sequencing and the right side the whole exome sequencing. So the recall rate actually up to 91% to 94%. If you look at the, the venogram, you can see that these three colors here, you know, complement to each other with the VAR track make the most contribution to the recall. So next step, we try to benchmark the supervised machine learning model for variant classification. So we collect the large training data set uh, and we extract the, the, uh, the, the features for this uh, uh, raw variant. So basically, we collect the 25 features for SND and the 24 features for Intel. And these features can be categorized into variant quality and uh, minor area frequency from the public database, uh, you know, or to the germline and the somatic uh, database. And uh, we also consider the genomic contact, uh, the consensus on colors uh, and the mutation pattern from the previous uh, chip study. So previous uh, chip study basically tell us that, uh, okay, so this is the chip that I found and uh, 50 to 60 percent, they are actually C to T transition. And uh, with these features, we try to benchmark uh, the four machine learning models. So it's a decision tree, support vector machine, random forest, and XGB boost. So here's the benchmarking result of those supervised machine learning model. So you can see from here, here, I only show the F1 score. We do have the recall and the precision. So you can see that the F1 score, I mean, F1 score basically is a very fair uh, geometric mean from uh, both recall and uh, the uh, precision. So you can see from uh, this uh, benchmarking, the class classification performance uh, basically just the XGB booster uh, better than the rest of them. And also, we also did the feature and policy analysis of XGB booster. And uh, based on this uh, feature and policy analysis, we can see that uh, the main color VNF and the mapping, uh, mapping quality, they make uh, uh, you know, significant contribution to the classified prediction. So here I showed the three classifiers. Three classifier basically just, uh, I only use the whole exome uh, uh, sequencing data uh, for the training as a training set, or I use the whole genome sequencing data set as a training set, or I combine both to see if I, we do the data augmentation that uh, if the performance can be improved. So next step, the, so previous when we de develop the, the, the model, the workflow, we focus on the simulation. Now we want to use the or software's validation on the you know workflow with the real time real life data. So in this case, we sequence the twenty five subject by both who exam sequencing. I think the uh, the coverage roughly one hundred x. And meanwhile, we also sequence this twenty five subject with the high depth panel. Uh, I think uh, above the one thousand coverage. So the true positive here is defined as, uh, you know, it's detected by the panel sequencing. And meanwhile, the chip clinical expert, they do the manual curation on those. So this panel basically to show you that uh, what is the approximate precision of this uh, uh, workflow. So basically that uh, for, from each subject that I collect the 18,000 of raw variant. And after we go through, through this uh, uh, workflow, you know, prediction, and I got 11 to 15 for each subject. And uh, so, so you can see that uh, these three classifiers, they perform very similar. I mean, I, I want to see that they have the big difference uh, uh, in terms of the precision. So this panel just show you that what is the recall of this uh, uh, classifier? So you can see that uh, they collect the 33 chips as a ground truth. Uh, and uh, the first and the second based on the whole exome sequencing, uh, whole exome sequencing plus whole genome sequencing, uh, they give a recovery uh, roughly 80%. Uh, so I think this is fairly very similar with what we got from the simulation data. 
So the model three based on the whole genome sequence here perform a less, I mean, a little bit worse because this is, uh, we actually apply this classifier that trained with the whole genome sequence uh, applied to the real life whole exome sequence data. So if we apply to the real life whole genome sequencing data, I mean, the recovery that might be uh, uh, even better. So the last step we want to apply this uh, uh, workflow to survey the chip prevalence in meal biobank cohort as a case study. So this uh, biobank, uh, just a, a brief uh, uh, background about this biobank. So this is the unselected co cohort. I wouldn't say this is general population. Basically, people call this convenience population, but the majority or 95% uh, they claim that should be health or no major cancer or other very serious disease. And uh, we have whole, ex whole genome sequencing data available for roughly 980 subjects. Uh, and uh, their age is uh, media is 60, uh, 60. So the, uh, roughly half of them are male and female. So I give this information because uh, people generally, you know, find that uh, the cheap prevalence is yeah, associated with the age, they are associated with the gender. So I think that's uh, for this, I think this is uh, very critical information. So from here that uh, we found uh, 200, uh, uh, 202 driver, cheap driver mutation. So if you can see that uh, these 200 uh, driver mutations, they actually distribute uh, onto the most common mutated gene that is seen in previous study, which is uh, epigenetic regulator DNA damage repair genes. And also, if you look, uh, if you check their clonal fraction, and uh, this is also consistent with the previous finding that, uh, you know, the DNMT3A, TED2, and the TP53, basically, they are small clones, uh, while the, the ASXL1 is basically dominated by the large clones. We also did the uh, statistical analysis. This is basically just the motor variant regression analysis. Uh, uh, between chip prevalence and the age, and we found that they are significantly associated with age. And uh, also, we observed the a typical chip mutation pattern, which is a C2T uh, transition, roughly 52%. Uh, and uh, if you do the cancer research, you know that uh, this pattern basically related to the aging process. I mean, chip also related to the aging process. And also we observed the uh, uh, C2A trans transversion, this is roughly 25%. Uh, I mean, this is a smoking related uh, pattern. And I think it uh, also makes sense. Next step, I will show you that uh, we found that uh, this cheap occurrence in Mayo Biobank, uh, they have the strong association with the smoking status. The p-value is uh, uh, 0.02. You know, the sample size is uh, less than 1,000, so I think this number is still decent. Uh, so basically, just like 21%, uh, 22% of a cheap carrier in smoker, vice 15% uh, in uh, non smoker. Yeah, that should be smoker. So also, we observed that uh, through the germline variant, uh, this variant is robustly associated with the TED2 dependent chip. So previous from the top med study, and they found that the three third germline variant, they are associated with the chip. And I think our sample size might be not big enough. We actually only find that the TED2 dependent chip actually related to one of the germline variant. I think the most important that the technical I want to show you that this pipeline, if you look at this, we detected 200 driver mutation and only 39 that detected by all three colors. So, and um, 120 detected by two color. So you can see that, you know, majority somatic mutation, uh, majority chip study, they use uh, the mutec 2 to detect the chip. But here, I just want to show you that uh, other two colors are actually, other two colors are actually, you know, detect the majority of the driver mutation. So here is- you, you have one minute now. Okay, sorry. Here's my, so, yeah, uh, so the, the, the workflow is uh, highly scalable 
and uh, can apply to the large scale cohort study. They are highly sensitive and can detect up to 1% of uh, who uh, uh, with the suboptimal coverage and the reasonable precision that I told you in previous slides. And also will provide the post uh, prediction module to ease the manual inspection process. So if you have any questions, you can text me or maybe just uh, chat if I still have time. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Shulan.